At the age of four, I dance. Uh, tap dancing, and ballet, and jazz, and gymnastics, and I loved it. I did cheerleading through high school. I graduated. I went to the Colts cheerleading for five years, and I went to the Super Bowl. The Colts didn't win it. <laughs> and I wanted to try out for the Dallas Cowboys cheerleading, and I saved a bunch of money, and I moved there not knowing any people at all, no friends or family. I was in the shower, about to go to work, and my arm went numb on me. I never had any idea was a stroke. I thought it was in my shoulder, a nerve was pinched in my shoulder. That's why I had a headache, an intense headache. I couldn't see my face in the, um, in the mirror. I thought I was having vertigo and I crawled over to my room and I knew I couldn't speak. I had to go to the hospital now. I couldn't remember any numbers, the ambulance. I couldn't remember it. It's the first person I called my boyfriend. It's the first number I called. He couldn't hear me. He thought I but dialed him. The police came in and she had his droopy face called the ambulance and I blacked out from then. I don't remember anything in the ICU, my boyfriend coming to hug me or my sisters. My dad came and hugged me and I, he, I cried and he cried. I don't remember anything like that. Um, it's one week lost to me. I won't remember that. I couldn't speak for 12 days. I was paralyzed on one half of my body. The PTs and the OTs would have to wheel me around in the wheelchair. Reading and doing numbers and writing, it was gone, lost in my brain. It was has to go to a different area in my brain. It's a, like a baby again. I don't have a limp as much anymore. I was walking with a cane and a boot and I don't walk with them anymore. I'm getting better at speaking. I have to say things in my mind before it comes out in my, in my mouth. <laughs> it's a hard thing for me to deal with. And I has ups and downs and everybody does. <laughs> I want to go to schools, high school kids, and tell them about strokes. They think it's oh no old people. And I had a stroke and I'm young. <laughs> and I'm so positive about not dying in my apartment <laughs> and living for that. And I am so encouraged because I can speak now. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. 145 over 92. 
180 over 111. 182 over 100. And I had a heart attack and a cardiac arrest and then a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a heart attack or stroke are far from invisible or silent. My memory is shot. When I woke up, I couldn't speak. I can't button up a shirt. I can't run. I've had to learn to swallow again. That's the only more minutes that I have. And I'm 33, so I never see this coming. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. Had I done this, had I done that, hell, I messed up. Get back on your plan or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhpp.org. I had to tell everything's changed. I had to tell. I'm Cindy Sorensen. I'm a mother of two. And three weeks ago at the age of 59, I was diagnosed with a brain aneurysm. I had had some floaters in this eye, and I went to my ophthalmologist in regards to these black spots I had in my eye. And uh, well, he told me sometimes that's pretty common with age that that can happen. A few weeks later, I was in Spain with my son and realized I couldn't see him. He was standing right to my left. That was the first that I noticed I had a real small loss of peripheral vision in my left eye. The ophthalmologist called for additional testing of my peripheral vision and found out that there were uh, actually a loss of vision in both of my eyes in the exact same spot. Two days later, I had brain surgery to coil the aneurysm and to also do a bypass. I don't have high cholesterol, diabetes, I'm not a smoker, I'm a marathon runner, I eat healthy, I have none of the risk factors but I was aware of a small change in my body. I'm a survivor. I want people to know that because of things that we've learned being associated with the American Heart Association. It's all about awareness and education and research and self-advocacy. The small symptom that I had to a very large, unusually located aneurysm that I have been told had it burst would have been life altering for me and my family. I cannot thank the donors to the American Heart Association enough for the difference that they've made in my life. Back now with a major medical headline. Tonight, for the first time in 14 years, there are some new guidelines redefining who should be diagnosed with high blood pressure. Doctors say now nearly half the U.S. adult population meet the new criteria. NBC News medical correspondent Dr. John Torres has the details in tonight's Keeping You Healthy report. We saw the need to update these guidelines to reflect the real threats of high blood pressure the significant change from the American Heart Association now means more than 100 million Americans have high blood pressure. The new guidelines now define high blood pressure as anything above 130 over 80 and recommend intervening earlier to control what doctors call the silent killer. The impact is especially important for people under 45. The new definition will triple the diagnosis among men and double it among women in that age group. Getting your blood pressure even lower than what we previously thought reduced your risk of heart attack, reduced your risk of stroke, and reduced your risk of dying. Some patients may need to start taking medication, but reducing your risk naturally is always the first line of defense. Exercise and lose weight, quit smoking, and reduce stress. Today's news is the extra push 58-year-old Jeff Evans needs to lower his blood pressure. My goal is to get off the medication completely. Um, control things naturally uh, through exercise and diet. Just go straight up. Jeff's on the right path, setting personal goals for himself and a good example for his family. 
And John, I figured that most people would opt for the natural uh, response if they could. But does this mean more people are going to be taking blood pressure medication? Not necessarily. The new guidelines stress treatment with both lifestyle changes and, if needed, medication. But high blood pressure is called a silent killer because you won't have symptoms early on. And that's why it's important to get your blood pressure checked regularly. Well, these new guidelines are a wake-up call for a lot of us. They are. John, thanks very much. Tamsin Butler. I'm 42 years old. I'm a group fitness instructor and a personal trainer as well. She is amazing. Even from the first time we met, I could tell that she was full of confidence, uh, just the way that she walked and carried herself. She's my mom. She's also like my makeup artist and my hairstylist and my chauffeur. She does everything for me. If you're like, hey mom, wouldn't it be cool if you do? this and then she'll like do all this training and then two weeks later hey Monet I got this license for this and I'll be like I just mentioned that conversationally she is that renaissance woman that can do everything I am not exaggerating there she's teaching like four classes a day she is like jogging with me in the morning at like 5 30 I mean if she wanted to she could probably like paint this house in like five minutes It was just any other day. It was the kids had the day off from school because it was still summertime. And we went to the grocery store and did our grocery shopping. And then we stopped at my husband's office and dropped off some sushi for him to have for lunch. And then we drove home. And then all of a sudden my right eye just stopped working. And I remember distinctly thinking to myself, well, that can't be good. And I can't even describe what it felt like. It wasn't like a pop or a shift or something, but something was happening right around here. And I remember thinking, this is definitely not good. And then I kept trying to put groceries away because you got to get the groceries away, I guess. <laughs> and so she was putting the dog treats and like the dog bones and stuff away. And then she just kind of like fell. And I was like, mom, are you okay? And she like tried to say something and I couldn't understand what she was saying. I heard Monet kind of freaking out. And so I go in and I thought mom was just trying to be funny by lying there on the ground. And then she just kind of laid down. She's like, can you get me a pillow? I'm like, so like, I'm like, Abram, go get a pillow. I knew something was wrong, and I saw these groceries spilled everywhere. Monet was like grasping for a phone. And so I'm like, Abram, can you call dad? I think something's wrong. She's like, don't call dad, don't call dad. And I'm lying there, and I'm trying to tell my kids that it's okay. Because even though I knew I was having a stroke, the last thing I wanted, and I know this makes no sense, and I still can't explain it to this day, but I didn't want my husband to find me that way. And I remember very specifically Monet, my, uh, my daughter, standing over me with her hands on her hips. And she's standing over me as I'm lying there looking up at her. And she goes, you're not OK. You're not all right. And she's like, don't call dad. Don't call dad. And I'm like, she's like, it's OK. It's OK. And I'm like, mom, you are not OK. I'm calling dad. When your mom is lying on the floor and drooling everywhere and can't use one part of her body, I'm pretty sure that's kind of scary. It was just complete chaos. I didn't realize and what probably a lot of people don't realize is a stroke is like an attack on your brain and so I couldn't really think straight that's kind of how the first few days of recovery were was perpetually stumbling into things that I didn't know how to do anymore it was really difficult at first and I remember thinking about how absurd it was that I had to relearn how to walk I remember when the first time they had me walk I was pushing my little walker along and I felt very weak and I kept kind of walking into the wall because I couldn't see stuff on my left. And uh, this was one moment that helped me a lot. And this goes back to the faith I have where I started thinking about all the people that were praying for me because that's all we kept hearing. We're praying for you, Tam. Tam, we're praying for you. And I started visualizing the prayers as things swirling around me and holding me up and keeping me walking.
feel like it was a challenge because, you know, we all kind of had to like pitch in and help, like with things that she would normally do. That was one of the worst things, was seeing, um, seeing me through my daughter's eyes. I've always tried to instill in her that, you know, women can be strong and able, and then all of a sudden I wasn't strong or able anymore. That was really hard. Um, it's not something that she normally is, you know, just sad. You know, she's upbeat, uh, typically, so to see her be down is hard. And I tell my husband, and I remember this moment really distinctly, I said, I said, nobody would blame me if I just gave up at this point. And he kind of crosses his arms and he goes, I would. And it just like clicked in my head. I said, all right, get up, dust yourself off and keep going. Well, Louie's a personal trainer and a friend of mine, and he has a congenital heart failure, and he has all sorts of devices in his heart. And so once my cardiologist told me that I could start exercising again, I reached out to Louie. My name is Louie King. I've had her in classes before. I knew she was strong. She was motivated, but just physically couldn't connect it. And to me, that was something that would be totally different. How do you motivate someone who's motivated? to do what they already want to do, but it's just trying to get that muscle mind connect back. The most simple exercises turn into something that was challenging. I've learned that you can't give up. Even if you want to, and it seems impossible to do something, you cannot give up. Well, I've personally found that the Heart Association has been uh, very helpful as far as giving me um, a feeling of I'm not alone and that you know there's other people who've gone through this and conquered it. I would say uh, that your contributions to the American Heart Association are critical uh, not only in funding for uh, recovery of of stroke survivors, but also into research and development of new uh, medicines um, that can, uh, and in the case of my wife, did save her life. Yo, D, come on, man. Waiting on you. I'm coming, man. What you doing in there? Ah, oh, man. I had to get these, oh, I had to get these chips, baby. Oh, you man. sound like you're out of shape, bro. You remember <laughs> what your doctor told you about eating all these snacks? Oh, huh? here we go. All right, you're gonna have to watch your blood pressure, dude. Man, come on, look, I'm fine. Plus, it's just more for the ladies to love, man. You can't be mad at that. <laughs> anyway, look, man, where's Marcus? Who, Salty Mark? <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be here in a few minutes. Why you call him Salty Mark, man? I call him Salty Mark because just like you, he's always eating all this salty food and drinking sodas with everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's your boy right here. Call him Mark. Uh-huh. Salty Mark, what's up, man? Where you at? <laughs> what? Hold on. What, what, what happened? Okay, okay. What's going on? Yo, that wasn't Mark, that was his wife, Kelly. Marcus had a heart attack. Uncontrolled high blood pressure is serious and can have tragic consequences. It can lead to heart attack, stroke, and even death. Visit heart.org slash blood pressure to learn more about how you and your friends can avoid the consequences of high blood pressure. If you care, say something. An important GMA health alert about high blood pressure. The American Heart Association changing the guidelines, meaning almost half of American adults could now be living with what's called the silent killer. This affects men and women, and our chief medical contributor, Dr. Jen Ashton, is here to talk about that. And you check with Jen, right? Jen is 
Jennifer. You checked Jennifer's yep. numbers? I, I, I checked that. Jennifer's numbers. She she gave me permission to share them. It was a little bit high. We did check it twice. Well, she she's on national she, TV that's under right. the lights. We're going to cut her some slack. Her heart rate was a little high elevated also, but mm -hmm. um, it was 154 over 100, Jen. So we did suggest that she get it checked again. But, Robin, this is medical news that could potentially affect what do we need to know here? half the country. New guidelines. The old guidelines, if you had a number of 140 over 90, you were classified as having hypertension. Now that number is dropped to 130 over 80, reflecting the fact that we know damage can occur at those lower numbers. Uh, so, again, very important for people to know these numbers, and it will affect a lot more people. It will double the number of women under the age of 45 who meet criteria for having hypertension. A lot more people involved. Will this be a lot more people on medication? Actually, it won't. No? Uh, the key here is that this should be managed with lifestyle Good. modification. It, it's only expected to increase the number of people on medication by 2%, but you have to take a look at these changes because these can make a big difference. Eating the right diet, the DASH diet is the gold standard in lowering blood pressure. Fitness, both cardio and weights, lowering sodium in your diet and increasing potassium in your foods with things like avocados, bananas, and salmon, and limiting alcohol no more than two drinks a day for men, one for women. They can lower those numbers by anywhere from four to 11 points, and every point matters. And you want to show us what high blood pressure does to the body. Right. Now, listen, I think we hear it as the silent killer. Yeah. You have to understand that high blood pressure affects organs like the kidneys, the eyes, the heart, the mm. blood vessels. But I want you to ch just look at this demonstration. If you imagine this pump as the heart and this as your blood vessels, okay. your vascular system, with normal blood pressure, it's very easy for the heart to pump. It can pump that blood all over the body. Once you have high blood pressure, you have increased resistance in these blood vessels. Mm. That pump mm. has to work harder to circulate the blood, and over time, this does major damage. So what should people do right now? I think the key thing is you need to know your numbers. And it, we've heard about white coat hypertension. People go to the doctor, their blood pressure gets elevated. For Jen, it's just being here. Mm -hmm. But get one of these home kits. Check one. your blood pressure yeah. at home. Make sure that you're trying to do it on a, on a bare arm. And if you have larger arms, you need to use a larger cuff. Good. All good advice there. All right, Jen. Thanks very much.